Growing up in Queensferry was fantastic. It's a lovely place, it's a great place. Growing up, there's a lot of walks with my dad. I'm proud to be from Scotland. I'm proud to come from Queensferry. Everything that I associate myself with, I'm kind of proud of. I don't think this is exclusively about my relationship to Queensferry, but I think that in some ways when you grow up, um, you get to a point where you leave home and you have an understanding, you get to see from a distance how much, how fantastic or otherwise things are. You know, now I understand why people come here and, you know, people that are here on holiday or come here for the day or whatever, you know, it's, I can see the magnetism of Queensferry totally. In the nicest possible way, I'm probably a bit of a weirdo, you know, and it's sort of, so it fits in, it's just there's a kind of happy accident that, you know, I grew up and I come from this place that has this weird thing. The Queen's Ferry that I walk, the Queen's Ferry that I interact with people on the Barry Mandy, feels like a different place from the place that I understand as Queen's Ferry. So, the 364 days a year, Queen's Ferry is one thing, this is a different slice, it's a, it's a parallel place. And I kind of feel like I'm almost, uh, I'm observing Queen's Ferry through this, these little apertures and I'm a brain inside this burr casing rather than John inside a suit. So we go out on the, the weekend before, I've calculated that I need approximately 11,000 burrs. The burdock plants grow in hedgerows, invariably near water, and they also seem to only produce burrs every two years. They're covered in moisture and they're moving with insects. They're left to dry, and then on the Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, we'll make up patches. The, the actual marvel and sort of bizarreness of the burdock itself is the sort of mechanical kind of wonder of the hooked arrangement. And I know that the scientist who evolved Velcro looked at a plant which is very closely related to the burdock. Burdocks have absolutely no given them at all. The actual movement of walking around, basically it's sawing away bits, so my shoulders, my knees, and there's always the odd bar that ends up working through my clothes and sticking the worst place you could possibly ever not want a bar to stick. The day itself, at a point about 8 o'clock in the morning, I'll go onto the, the dance floor and at this point, this is where I'm going to feel uncomfortable from this moment forward for the rest of the day. And it starts off over my clothes, I have a set of long johns which go over my trousers. I've got a long sleeve vest and my mum and my girlfriend Emma stitch these together. Basically, I'm being encapsulated in a material that the burrs will then be applied directly to. So I don't have that many layers of clothing between me and the bird dogs themselves. I feel a connection with the past when I'm doing the Burry Man, simply because there is nothing sophisticated about the way that I observe the tradition. You know, it's, it's not. I'm not trying to make it easy. I'm just. It's, it's the way it is. It's. It's sort of. It's. It's basic. It's primitive. The burrs are then 
starting at my ankles, working up, slowly encapsulating my whole body. As the burdocks move up towards my chest, this is as low as my arms are going to get all day. My shoulders are going to kill me beyond any shoulder pain I've experienced in the past. So that, that there's, a, there's a lot of fuss going on around me. I'm trying as much as possible to kind of ignore it. One of the, the, the kind of big, big moments really is the balaclava goes on. I've got long hair, so my hair gets sort of pulled back. The balaclava is a full horror show balaclava with the, you know, the mouth, the mouth hole and the eyes and nothing else. That goes over and really at that point it's kind of bye-bye really because it has that, it's like the sort of psychology of wearing a mask where I'm now not recognisable as John Nicol and on the way to being a man. The burrs are then applied to my face, the, my hat goes on and the other thing that I'm always very aware of at this point is that how hot it becomes. I'm then guided out onto the, the cobbled high street of Queen's Ferry. My two friends, Stevie Cannon and George Topping, they are my supporters and they are basically my guides for the day. They help my mobility, my vision, my general um, awareness of where I am. At that point we'll then go on a predetermined route around Queen's Ferry. From that moment onwards we walk around the sort of west part of Queen's Ferry, right round in a big loop, stopping for photos, you know, there's a collection tin as well. There's the, the, there's children that follow us, and there's a bell ringer as well, which to alert people the fact that the bunny man is is approaching. I blacked out one year. Every year, I am slashed to bits. It's scary. It can be sort of scary because it's so displaced from what is completely familiar. I think that. There is a genuine something that happens as the Burry Man. I'm aware of something different. You're, 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 you're so sensitised to every little, you know, jag and burr and things crawling around and, and everything that you, you can't deal with any of it. There's so much information that it becomes a drone, really, where it's just saturation point to the point that there's nothing, that it's silence. You just say, there's so much to deal with, I'm going to just, that's going to be my, that's the sort of flat line in the whole thing. It's actually a similar feeling to the feeling that I get when I'm up the mountains or on my bike and it's a complete immersion in the natural world. We are animals, we sometimes forget that, but I think that it's the whole embracing of getting stuck into things, you know, like yeah there's, there's beasties and there's jaggies and there's nettles and things, but it's not going to kill you. It's, it's sort of exploring your world, really, and I think that the, I think for me the the Burry Man is really closely related to other things that I completely identify with. The Burry Man is actually a tradition which was reintroduced at well the early part of last century. 
the, the people who started to do the tradition again, although I'm thankful to them that they did that, I think already we didn't have a roadmap for the Burning Man. And in light of there being nothing written down, it can be blown off track. I also think as well that it's it's down to the, the, the time I deliberately went out to say, right, well, let, let, I want to see the earliest evidence of the Burning Man. I want to do my own kind of archaeological dig of the tradition. To be more historically accurate, I don't think that Scotland or the United Kingdom or any type of territory has, has any place in the Burry Man and that's why last year I went to great lengths to explain that the Burry Man doesn't have a flag anymore. By a happy coincidence, my parents, the at the very top of Queen's Ferry, and for the last 13 years at lunchtime, I get to lean against my parents' back garden fence and watch all my friends and family, closest, nearest and dearest, having a wild party as I stand and watch. The only relief I get on the day is that I can lean against things, I can lean against walls, I can't stick to brick. I'm a person covered in burdocks and other natural flowers. You know, I've, I've kind of insisted that as much as possible it's natural vegetation. The burdocks are wild and jaggy and I want, you know, wild flowers as well. They might not look as spectacular in some respects, but I think they're much nearer to what, what it should be. The Burry Man holds a sort of special place in my heart because I just can't quite get my head around what it is and I think that my involvement in it, you know, a big chunk of my life so far has been around the Burry Man and I still don't feel that I'm like an expert on the Burry Man. I'm interested in people's beliefs. I don't really have a strong belief. I'm just generally interested in and respectful of what people believe. I believe that the the Burry Man is has a a meaning, a, a significance of some description. And I think because I don't necessarily know what that is, doesn't mean that it doesn't deserve a, a real respect. I think the other thing that's really important with the Burry Man is just that that it's preserved. There's a fragility to the Burry Man. How are you, nice to see you. This year, the Burry Man 2011 will be my 13th consecutive year being involved in the tradition. There's almost 20,000 people that live in Queen's Ferry now, and there must be other people in Queen's Ferry that are interested in challenging themselves or feel gravity towards the tradition enough to put themselves through this for a year or two. It's something to do with the spirit of people from Queen's Ferry. This is a unique thing. It's worth putting yourself through that for one day. Whiskey is a big factor in the day. And it's something that, you know, I think you're you're supposed to savour, you know, a wee dram over some ice and sip it and Certainly not designed to drink it through a straw at nine o'clock in the morning. Straight. It's a bullet to your brain. Last October, I decided that I wanted to stop drinking. And so this year, the, I suppose it's the only thing that I'm concerned about, really. Do I gesture that I'm taking whiskey? What's more important to me is that they engage with the tradition. So by them being excited that I'm standing at their garden gate is, is enough for me. When I see the next Burry Man doing it, I suppose I'll feel a mixture of emotions, really. I don't think jealousy is one of them. I think I'll feel relieved and I'll probably have a great deal of sympathy 
there's only one person other than me alive that knows how the Burry Man feels and that particular guy did it for half a day. Frequently people will talk about, you know, why put yourself through that? And I think it doesn't matter, you know, it's someone, it's just, it's just someone, I'm just, I'm just someone that's doing it. My ultimate aim is to make sure that the tradition continues to be. It's something which there's a, a complete mystery about what does the Burry Man mean? And the only thing I'm certain of is that no one, no one can actually tell you. No one can be certain. The day really culminates with a walk along the High Street. A lot of walk along as far as the Hawes Inn and then walk back along towards the starting point of the day at the Stag. Normally by this point it's five, half five, six o'clock, depending on what how the days went. Uh, it could sometimes be after six o'clock. I have a final dram in the Stag and it's always my dad who ultimately kind of tapped me on the shoulder affectionately and say, right son, that's you. And then I'll go up the steps and there's a chair on the dance floor, the dance floor that I got dressed at eight o'clock that morning. And I sit down and then there's a flurry of activity around me and I'm basically cut free unceremoniously and very quickly. It takes 30 seconds to get cut free. And to have the balaclava pulled off my head like that is definitely one of the most amazing moments of bliss I've ever experienced. It's just incredible to suddenly have air again around your face and everything. I'm just disorientated and I've, I've often described it. It's like how I would imagine being born. It's you, you kind of crash land back in Queens Ferry. Normally it's at that point that I realise where all my my kind of agony and discomfort really sort of hits me at that point and that's really the you know, in, a, in a nutshell what the ones in the day the more that the body man goes into the future the more kind of abstracted in a way it becomes the more oblique, the more odd it becomes. And you imagine someone that finds a tape of your documentary in, you know, a thousand years and they've worked out how to play the format you've, you know, and everything like that. And there's a buried man there that's say, well, what, you know, what, what's this? It's a kind of key into something that, it's evidence, it's a tracing or a kind of a direction sign for something that's even when we were doing it, even when you're doing this, we don't know what it's about. It's just that it demands respect enough to do it, just to continue it, although we don't have any frame of reference other than the fact that we know it's important.